A very good morning and good day to everyone. The next cranial nerve we are going to read about is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Whenever you explain any cranial nerve, first of all you should say what type of nerve it is, whether it is purely sensory, purely motor or mixed. And number two, we have to tell which cranial nerve, that is there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves, you should be able to tell it one by one, that is you know the olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, obducent, facial, vestibular cochlea, glossopharyngeal nerve. So this is the ninth cranial nerve, vagus, accessory and the hypoglossal nerve. So today in the next consecutive lectures, I'm going to cover about the glossopharyngeal nerve and the hypoglossal nerve. Can you guess something with the name itself, the glossopharyngeal nerve? So the main two regions which this nerve is going to supply is the tongue and the pharynx. Also, the associated structures, you know, uh, though the main area of supply will be the tongue and the pharynx, the neighboring structures can also be supplied, okay, helped. Um, let's get into the topic. Please take these slides and my lecture as a quick review of specific topics and it is not intended as a guide for any treatments or surgical procedures. If in case you like my lecture, please share it with your friends and give a thumbs up and please hit the bell button so that you'll get further notified whenever I upload any new lectures. Let's get into the topic. So there are 12 cranial nerves. When you see here, the oculomotor and trochlear nerve comes from the emerges from the midbrain and the 5, 6, 7 and 8 nerves, the trigeminal, abducent, facial and the vestibular cochlea emerges from the pons. The last four cranial nerves which I am going to talk about here, the glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory and hypoglossal are going to emerge from the medulla oblongata. So whenever there is a spotter question, when they pin the pons, you should be able to say the 5, 6, 7 and 8 cranial nerves emerge from the pons. Cranial nerve nuclei, they will ask what are the cranial nerve nuclei at this region. And if it is medulla oblongata, at least you should be able to write the last four cranial nerves. When you see here, when you observe here, except for the hypoglossal nerve, all the other three emerge from the posterior lateral aspect. Whereas only this hypoglossal nerve emerges from the anterolateral aspect. This can be one among the MCQs. Okay, so now let's get into the topic. In the cranial cavity, here you should know two foramens or canal, one foramen and one canal, hypoglossal canal and jugular foramen. We are concentrating on the four cranial nerves here. The ninth, tenth and eleventh cranial nerves exit through the skull using the jugular foramen or through the jugular foramen. Why it is called as jugular foramen? Because the internal jugular vein exit the cranial cavity through this jugular foramen and hypoglossal canal we all know hypoglossal canal helps in the exit of hypoglossal nerve the only odd man out which emerges from the anterolateral sulcus when you see the relations of these four cra cranial nerves the last four cranial nerves can you see here this is the hypoglossal canal the rest of the cranial nerves the glossopharyngeal vagus accessory comes through the middle part of the jugular foramen or the intermediate compartment of the jugular foramen and when you see here through the posterior compartment the internal jugular vein exit. So all these four cranial nerves are somewhere related between the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery and when you see here the glossopharyngeal nerve crosses the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery to enter into the oral cavity where it terminates and gives uh, the terminal branches of supply. Coming to the functional components, remember the words special, general, visceral, somatic, afferent, efferent. So special means some special sensations like um, even the nerves which are su supplying the muscles which are emerging from the branchial arches that is called a special and then viscera means related to organs and systems somatic means something related to the skin which is covering our human body 
and then afferent and efferent. Efferent is something from the brain to the target organs, gives an effect. Afferent means some sensations are felt which are carried to the brain. Say for example, you are having a chocolate cake. So you know it is sweet. That sensation of taste is taken to the brain and brain is coming to know that uh, something, uh, the tongue has tasted something sweet. So that is special, visceral, afferent. Something has been taken to the brain as afferent. So what are the components here for the glossopharyngeal nerve? Special visceral efferent. So it, it arises. Remember, all these nerves okay, are nothing but a plant emerging from seeds. The seeds are nothing but the nuclear. So remember in that way. So glossopharyngeal nerve has five components. Special visceral efferent, general visceral efferent and three afferent. Special visceral afferent, general visceral afferent and general somatic afferent. I told you special visceral efferent. Stylopharyngeus emerges from the third branchial arch. So it is considered to be special and nucleus ambiguous. From this nucleus, this component arises. And we would have read about the otic ganglion, which is carrying the secretomotor fibers to the parotid gland. So that comes from the general visceral efferent component of the glossopharyngeal nerve through the inferior salivatory nucleus which supplies the secretor motor fibers to the parotid gland. And then, special visceral afferent. Can you tell me what it is? Taste sensation. From the nucleus of tractus solitarius, can you see? Afferent, I have put an arrow mark towards the brain. Okay, so taste sensation from the posterior one-third of the tongue. From the same posterior one-third of the tongue, there is general sensation being carried. Can you see here the next one? General sensation from the pharynx, palate, tonsil. See, all these are related. Okay, nasopharynx, oropharynx are related to the palate, soft palate, and the tonsil. So, posterior one third of the tongue, which is go, which goes to the dorsal nucleus of vagus, and then that forms the general visceral afferent. General means general sensation. Special means special sensation. Now comes the last one, general somatic. I told skin, soma means skin, remember like that, afferent. So something is carried to the brain, to the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. So that carries proprioceptive impulses. See, these terminologies are kind of tricky, but once you understand the meaning, anatomy becomes easy. So proprioceptive impulses, proprioception means I am able to move my joints. I am able to move the temporomandibular joint. I am able to do movements which I know I am. I am aware that I am doing. So that impulses are called as the proprioceptive impulses. So from the stylopharyngeus and from the skin of the auricle. So these are the functional components and the related nucleus. So what I have done is, let me go back to one slide. This is the medulla oblongata. Just imagine it to be a carrot. Okay. So I am just slicing the carrot and taking one slice and showing you. Instead of like this, I am showing you this way. So that is the section here where I have marked all the nucleus. Can you see here? Nucleus ambiguous, inferior salivatory nucleus. Always the sensory nucleus are away and the motor nucleus are towards the midline. So this is the motor nucleus which is going to supply the stylopharyngeus muscle, inferior salivatory nucleus, dorsal nucleus of vagus, nucleus of tractus solitarius and then the, what is this, inferior cerebellar peduncle and this one is the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. So let's stop the topic here and in the next lecture, let's go to the branches and areas of distribution with the, these special components, functional components and also we will know how to test the nerve and how to find if there is a lesion in the nerve. So I will split this glossopharyngeal nerve as two topics and let's continue the lecture in the next recording.